When taking blood pressure, there are a number of things to keep in mind. And a couple of things that I often see at the doctor's office to really kind of get messed up is uh, one, that blood pressure is supposed to be a resting blood pressure. So a lot of times you walk in, sit down, and immediately they take your blood pressure. But that's not a resting blood pressure. That's an active blood pressure. And when we're talking about blood pressures, we really want to talk about resting blood pressures. So you really need to be sitting down for about five minutes before they take that pressure. And if they take it as soon as you sit down, it's a little bit high. If they express any kind of concern about that, just ask them to come back in about 15 minutes and do it again. And you will most likely find that it's dropped a good bit. Something about being at the doctor's office starts pressure being a little bit higher anyway. It's called white coat syndrome because you're never at the doctor because you're having such a good day that you know you have a perfect bill of health and everything's wonderful. There's always a little bit of background stress there. It would probably help if the doctor would run on time too, but we know that doesn't happen either. Another thing I often see is the use of digital blood pressure cuffs. And I really don't like those. I propose that they aren't overly accurate because a machine is deciding when it hears a heartbeat and when it doesn't hear a heartbeat. And that's a little bit of a subjective call. Additionally, a lot of times with those digital cuffs, they also have you bend your arm at the elbow. And that's artificially increasing and decreasing blood pressure in different parts of the arm as well. So across the board, those things just really mess it up. Now, in the clinical setting, you'll probably have a blood pressure cuff that consists of a cuff with a pressure bulb and a pressure monitor here. This is an at-home version that you would buy at something like Walgreens. And it actually has the stethoscope built into the cuff. So that's easy for an at-home person to use. But again, in a clinical setting, you're probably going to have the cuff by itself and the stethoscope by itself. And that's okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to place this cuff around the patient's arm. And if possible, you want them to have their sleeves rolled up if that's not going to majorly cause problems there. Because the less stuff you have to listen through for that heart beat, the better off you'll be. You're going to place the cuff around their arm such that the stethoscope itself is contacting the inside of the elbow. And you always want the arm to be in a relaxed position. You don't want to, to be a lot of tension or pressure or having to hold things up in place. It just doesn't uh, work out well. So we'll get things here. We've got the, the stethoscope on the inside of the elbow. We're going to tighten it up here. And you want to get it not, not incredibly tight to start with, but you also don't want it flopping all over the place either. And what you're going to do is you're going to, to pump up the cuff. So we'll turn the little dial to the right here. And that will ensure that all of the air pumped by our little bulb here actually goes up and stays in the cuff. And what we want to do is pump it up to a pressure that I personally like to go up to about 160. Some people like to go past that. But if you're immediately hearing heartbeat at 160, you know you have a really high blood pressure there and um, you have sort of a problem. So most of the time 160 is going to be good. We don't want to crank it too high because we're not trying to pinch off the arm completely. So really what we're going to do is we're going to increase the pressure until this particular artery here on the inside of the arm is completely closed off. So no blood will be flowing through it. And when we're letting the pressure off slowly, we're going to place the stethoscope around our, in our ears as you would normally expect to do. So let's go ahead and pump that up to about 160. And I'm going to slowly turn that dial to the left and let the pressure off until I hear a heartbeat. So I've taken two numbers here. The top number was 105, the bottom number was 60. So that top number tells us 
what the pressure of the blood was when it first started to push its way back through that artery again. So that would be the first time you hear the heartbeat is when the blood is starting to go back through the artery again. The lower number is when you no longer hear the heartbeat sounds and that's because there is no longer any resistance to that blood going through that artery. So really you're measuring the maximum pressure and the minimum pressure of blood in that particular artery when the heart's beating. And so that gives us our, in this case, 105 over 60. In this case, this is my uh, nine-year-old daughter, so that's a perfectly expectable blood pressure for a healthy nine-year-old. If my blood pressure was 105 over 60, we might start looking at, do I have a problem? <laughs> it would be really nice if I were healthy enough to have something approaching that, but I'd be happy with a 125 over 80 or somewhere in that ballpark. So hopefully this was helpful in giving you an idea of how to take blood pressures properly. And you'll just need some practice. And you probably could let the pressure off a little bit quicker than I did. But the more practice you get, the smoother you'll get with this as well. Sometimes I see people use a pressure dial that's mounted on the wall. And they actually, or even when you're using a regular setup like this, and they watch, and not for hearing anything, but they actually watch for the little pressure dial to start ticking. And when it starts twitching, that means that the, the heart is pushing blood against it. It's detecting an increase and decrease in pressure. But I'm going to argue that you don't pick up the sound as quickly if you were hearing it versus if you were just watching for the pressure to tick. And so that's going to artificially manipulate your numbers in the wrong direction. So uh, listen for heartbeat. Don't just watch for the dial to tick. So hopefully these are some suggestions that will help you get a more accurate blood pressure. And again, it's just the sort of thing that you're going to have to practice, practice, practice. And after you've done it uh, dozens of times, you'll start to get comfortable with it. And then hopefully at that point you will be accurate. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.